It's productivity time. It's productivity time. It's productivity time with Advisor and Blue Ninja. Ladies, welcome back. Um, we're a little bit later than usual this month, but as always, it's great to have you guys for our hashtag productivity happening every once, I don't know, once a month on a Thursday, whichever Thursday that ends up being. But it's great to have you guys back. And this month, we are talking about streamlining your business. So last month, we started out with discussing making brainstorming work for you, which covered planning and techniques like if you had stop, start, and continue, looked at innovation, collaboration, and really actually quite a lot else. So this month, we're talking about streamlining your business. And as we are constantly collecting a new software, well, I, I'm often in this space, constantly looking for new tools, new software. And if you've been listening to any of our productivity sessions before, you will know that, that we all love tools. And sometimes it's a bit, bit of a problem, right? Because there's some deals and recommendations and then you're trying to see what works and what doesn't work. And then you're trying to put things together and then things break and, and it becomes really, really stressful. And sometimes the time and effort that it can take to review and see which, which elements will work well and what is what is it able to do and what's it not able to do and how it can work together seamlessly can seem like a really big challenge. Mm. But that's where streamlining comes in, right? So streamlining will help you to take back control of your business operations, your team role, as well as your costs. So ladies, my question, guys, is where do we actually start with streamlining? It's a big concept, but it should be really simple. So where do we start? It is, it is a big concept. And um, we find mind mapping is a very useful tool for both of us and for the clients that we work with, you know, getting it all down on a piece of paper to see how things work and often don't work in your business and then seeing where there can be improvements. You know, there may be multiple touch points um, that can be reduced. Um, and and when it's all until it's all written down, it's very, very hard to see the wood for the trees, of course. Um, and there may be something that's lurking in the background that you forget about. Um, and also people might not have told you everything, you know, so it all gets it down so people can collectively review whether all the elements take into account. And, you know, if it's forgotten, it will have real impact and cost. And so once you've got all the detail out of everyone's heads, it's about analysis of what works, what doesn't, what new tools are there that are better, et cetera. Uh, it can take time, but without it, either you're going to stay static or you're not going to move with the times and just end up buying more things and hoping for the best. Uh, one simple tool we started using last year was Calendly. There are other calendar calendar booking tools available. Um, that's integrated with our calendar, our website, et cetera, and our CRM. Um, and we can choose to make ourselves available. Um, it's a small cost, but think how much email back and forth it saves. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I like what you said, Julia, about getting what's on, what's like, what's in your head onto a piece of paper, because that's sometimes the hardest part. Um, I, I sometimes find I get lost in all of the research because there's so many cool things available, but actually I probably don't need every single aspect of every single tool, right? So if you can get out of your head what you're actually looking for, it's probably going to be a whole lot simpler. Um, so when we think about streamlining our business, is there a good or a bad time to do this? Like when, when is the best time for us to be looking at this? So we've talked about reviewing our processes on our Facebook Live, optimizing your business flow. That was back in August. And we constantly talk about planning, which can feel like an indulgence, but without it, things get out of control. Um, annually at the absolute minimum, but as soon as a new, you get a new system or software or any sort of changes in that space, apart from there should be some good rationale why that has happened. It's an opportunity, oh, opportunity to review any other potential quick wins. So from brainstorming, we talked about last month, the output should include an element of streamlining. If you're adding another layer of complexity or cost to what you do and how you're going to do it, then you need to be clear why you're doing that. Um, what is the return on investment? And if not, rethink why you're doing it. And, and one key opportunity for, um, for me was when Julie and I came to be, uh, together as a partnership, you know, we went back to the basics of what are our operational running costs as a business. You know, we put all the details um, into a software um, and so into a spreadsheet of all the software and tools that we were using, you know, including what they did. And when the renewals were due to, you know, track the benefits of these, you know, see if there are any synergies or anything that we no longer needed. Um, you know, that was a regular cost and it's now tracked monthly. So that's helpful for us. 
Yeah, well, it really helps to have that, that clarity and visibility of the cost, right? Because I think we so often get, get a bit of scope creep with our subscriptions mm-hmm. if we're not tracking it. And that can actually have quite a significant impact on our business. You know, maybe even realizing that you don't have to be on the tier that you're currently on, like that already can create cost savings. Yeah. And I think as well with tools that some tell you that they're going to renew, but others don't. So you've got to be quite careful of tracking because oh. you might not always get noticed that you're going to have money coming out of your, out of your business account. Yeah, that is a very, very valid point. And being able to budget for that and do the cash flow and make sure that that's working, really, really important. <laughs> so um, you guys suggested that potentially, uh, you know, some of these tools cost money and I'm a sucker for free tools, but they don't always work that well. Um, so, you know, what, what do you guys feel about investing in tools and is it really worthwhile for us to spend money to make these things happen? Yeah, investing in the right tools that will work well with the other tools that you have is really important and getting rid of the ones that give you a headache or even automate, you know, um, that is a magic word for us. You know, stop right now. If you're copying and pasting the same messages repeatedly, if you feel like there's a better way of doing something, there probably is. And to that point, there are two pieces of software that we do look at automation. It's Zapier and automate.io. We use automate.io because the system itself is easier to use as a tool than we find with Zapier. So also consider if two tools do exactly the same thing, if you find there's a preference visually or how something works for you, uh, you know, go with what feels better for you because you'll be more inclined to keep using it. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes hard to stop, evaluate when everything's just going at 100 miles an hour, but it's worth it to look how things are working and improve. Um, collaborate with people, ask questions, see what other tools and techniques people are using, what are your competitors doing, check them out and you'll have heard the phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. Okay, it's been very interesting to see how, um, how some people build their tech stack and how frequently they actually use other people's tools, even if they themselves are, you know, like a technical company because they realise that, you know, we can't all do everything well. So. What happens if you are not a tech whiz? Um, my, my team always says that, you know, I'm, I'm very tech savvy. I love gadgets. I love using Excel to automate things and looking for new things. But what happens if you are not a tech wizard? Like, is that mm-hmm. fundamentally excluding you from this process? No, not at all. I mean, that's when you need a professional who is. It's time to outsource. Businesses of all sizes can benefit from outsourcing. Identify the tasks that you're not skilled in and find someone who is. We can't be good at everything like finance, IT support, HR marketing. There's so many elements to running a business. The number of skills you need um, just can feel endless. When done correctly, it can help your business to run more efficiently and reduce costs. For example, outsourcing tasks will allow you to focus on your business growth without sacrificing quality and service in the back office. And if you don't know anyone with the skills you need, you know, ask around. If someone's had a great service, then they'll happily recommend someone. If you don't have much of a budget, you know, consider an intern. But remember, they will need a lot of support. You know, we can have marketing support by, uh, sorry, we have marketing support by our company that, that vets, manages and provides students. You know, it's a great service for us as it takes away the overhead of managing that individual and keeps the costs low. Oh, that's a very valid point. I think um, we've previously discussed the benefit of having someone that's maybe cheaper but untrained. Um, and we, we sometimes forget how much it actually costs to make sure that you are able to support that person as well. So having an agency that's helping you to do that, and you know, it's, it's really a massive time saver. So I love that you guys are doing that. Are there maybe any other streamlining tips that you guys would like to share with us? I won't ask another question about tools for this one. I'll just ask for any other tips you want to share. <laughs> so develop a long-term um, technology plan. Um, you can do this part of your software and tools evaluate, evaluation we talked about at the beginning, but outdated and ineffective hardware can majorly impact your employees' productivity. I struggled the first year in business with a laptop that just wasn't up to the job and crashed every time I joined Zoom. Um, You need the right tools for the job and the investment can really improve and minimize or reduce these disruptions. Yeah. And, you know, in part of running a business, certain areas do need some investment. Um, And if you forget about these things, they will go wrong when you really don't want them to. So you need to minimize the risk of utilizing tools that they're doing what you need that you understand how to use them 
And remember as well that if something isn't working for you, there should be something else out there in the market that will work for you. So you need to be thinking about in your strategy, as Julie talked about, you know, the long-term planning for tools is just as important as every other element of your business. Because after three years, if you can no longer do what you need it to do because you've grown so much, you're going to have to take that into account. Absolutely. I love that, um, Louisa. I think it's really important for us to consider the fact that as much as um, human resources are a significant component of our business and trying to make things happen with that capacity, tools are almost just as important, right? And, and they should be supplementing what your capacity is in your business, but also complementing what you're able to do with the people that you've got. So definitely a specific area that we need to be considering in our businesses. And I want to... Um, Maybe just for our listeners, if you are doing things manually, I can almost guarantee you there's a tool that will help <laughs> to simplify it, that can automate it, and that can help to save you time, whether that's Excel spreadsheet or whether it's Automate, automate IO uh, or Zapier, whichever it is, just find a way to get, you know, get rid of all of this manual work that we do in our lives because uh, we can just actually save so much time and the um, the result of the scalability in your business is just going to be so much greater if you are able to to save on that time. And as we were talking about time next month, we are talking about how to deal with being too busy. Now, I cannot, you know, I can't even fathom the fact that October is basically over and we're heading into November and the year's like rushing to a close. And there's still so many things that's on my to-do list that has to get done. And sometimes just don't know where to stop and start, right? Because mm -hmm. life is just too busy. So I'm very much looking forward to next week's session. Next week, next month session, it's going to be really great. So make sure you tune in with the Blue Ninjas and Upfizer. Yeah, all right, thanks. Hashtag productivity. There we go. that one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So until next month, we'll see you then. Bye. Okay, bye. This podcast has been brought to you today by Upfizer and Blue Ninja. Upfizer, your strategic financial partner of choice to improve your productivity and profitability. Visit upvisor.co.za to unlock your full potential. Blue Ninja, your online business management team for streamlining and improving your business functionality. Visit blueninja.eu because every business needs a ninja.